the case so. We are rationalising the denominator of a seed. So the denominator is the bit on the bottom. At the minute that is an irrational number. So we want to rationalise it. So this means we need to take whatever's on the bottom and we want to get rid of the seed. It doesn't matter about the top, it's just the bottom. We need to get rid of the seed. So if we multiply the bottom by root 7, then that will get rid of the seed, but we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing because that is the equivalent of multiplying by 1. So to rationalise the denominator, we just multiply the top and the bottom by root 7. So 1 times root 7 on the top is root 7. Root 7 multiplied by itself is just 7. You can leave your final answer in this form, but be aware that that can also be written as a seventh of root 7. So this form or this form will be correct. Moving on to part B. Again, we want to rationalise the denominator, so we need to get rid of that root 2. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by root 2. If you've done this question by multiplying by 3 root 2, that's perfectly fine, that will also work. So we multiply the top together, 1 times root 2 is just root 2. And then on the bottom, we've got 3 times root 2 times root 2. So root 2 times itself is 2, times by 3 is 6. So you can leave your answer like this. But again, please be aware that that can be written as a sixth of root 2. So either of those will be fine. Part C is a little bit more difficult because we've got 1 over root 3 plus 2. Now, if we were to go along with the same method and multiply the top and the bottom by root 3, you will find that the bottom still has a seed in the answer, which is not what we're after. So that method is not going to work when we've got root 3 plus 2 on the bottom. Okay, so what we do this time is we, we change the sign on one of these terms. So I'm going to change the sign on the 2, and I'm going to multiply by root 3 minus 2. Again, I have to do the same to the top as to the bottom. And when we multiply them together, the top is 1 times root 3 minus 2. Anything multiplied by 1 just stays the same. So the top line is root 3 minus 2. Now the bottom line we can do as a grid, like before, like you are multiplying out two brackets. So I've got a root 3 plus 2 and a root 3 minus 2. Root 3 times by itself is 3. Here we've got two lots of root 3. We've got positive times a negative, which is negative, and again we've got two lots of root 3. Here we've got a negative times a positive, which is negative, and 2 times 2 is 4. So we've got 3 plus 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3 minus 4. The 2 root 3 subtracts the 2 root 3 to give 0, so we are left with 3 minus 4, which is minus 1. So this is what we get from the bottom. We can put that over here. Now that is okay for the final answer, but if we wish to simplify it and make it look a little bit nicer, we've got two terms divided by minus 1. So we can take the first term divided by minus 1, and also the second term divided by minus 1. Root 3 divided by minus 1 is minus root 3. And here we've got minus 2 divided by minus 1, which is just going to be plus 2. That is also an acceptable final form for your answer.